because I will be one of the presenters, <laughs> uh, I won't be hosting. So today our host will be my dear friend Tyler Bennett. And yeah, I will leave the floor to him to take care of all the session. And yes, but I wanted to greet all of you. Uh, yeah, thank you. But Tyler. Thank you, Israel. So welcome to the fourth and final installment of the uh, History and Praxis series. As usual, we'll have three speakers and I'll introduce them in turn. Also, as usual, uh, we're recording the session and we'll be uploading the recording to YouTube. So if you don't want your face uh, broadcast to the, to the world and don't turn on your camera. Um, uh, thank you to the people who have joined us in person, our most important audience. Yes. And, you know, I believe, I think they're having some conference over there in, in Tartu, some Umbelt conference, which is keeping some of them a little late. So we don't have the party window into Tartu today, which is most unfortunate. That's fine. Maybe they'll watch the recording. I know, exactly. What are going to do? I don't know. We'll manage. Yeah. Now, without further ado, uh, our first presenter tonight is Yulia Mostova. She is a PhD student at the Department of Czech Language at Palatsky University. She completed her BA studies in Czech and Ukrainian philology at Vasil Stefanik Precarpathian National University and her MA at Palatsky University in the same field. Her doctoral research deals with the ubiquity of gender bias in natural language processing. The title of her talk is New Challenges Caused by AI, a Semiotic Perspective. So if you're with us, Yulia, you can go ahead and uh, share screen. Uh, yes, yes. Right. Okay. So can I share? No, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, okay, so then I guess it will be like this. Yeah, or whichever you prefer. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes when you full screen on a PowerPoint presentation and the slides don't don't move, but you can try it anyway. We have time if you want to try it. Um, okay. Whichever you prefer. Yeah, so no, it's full screen. It yeah. Okay, so hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Sorry that I could not join you in present, but... <laughs> Now I'm celebrating my Slavic Easter with my friends in Serbia, so that's why I cannot be present with you online. But today we will talk about uh, new challenges caused by AI in a semiotic perspective, Since, but I'm not such a semiologist as all of you are, but um, I hope to keep it interesting for you. So um, we will talk about matter and meaning. There are shifts in the connections through time and then the age of um, informational technology, how semiotic can um, apply there and maybe like some future significance uh, for semiotics. So um, according to Hale days, um, interrelations between the two realms of human experience the world of matter and the world of meaning define the human condition. So the world of matter is a physical world um, consisting of living organism and inanimate entities and materials. And the world of meaning is more difficult to describe due to the lack of appropriate terms. And as a result, semiotic is used. Uh, semiotic thus includes different resources such as language, images, music, sound, and embodied actions, and meaning, uh, meanings which arise as a choice from the resources combined in semiotic phenomena such as text, interactions, and events. So semiotic uh, can be compared to semantic, which generally refers to meaning made through language. And meaning was sidelined in formal linguistic. However, and also it is central to cognitive linguistics. The focus is directed towards cognition rather than semiotic resources themselves. And uh, more recently, meaning uh, provides the foundation for many approaches in um, mutual studies. 
um, which uh, to large extent are based uh, on a holiday social semiotic theory. So um, matter and meaning are intervened, but there are benefits in uh, considering them separately for theoretical and analytical purposes. So first, it is possible to consider that the ways in which material and semiotic realms of experience are related to each other. Secondly, it is possible to develop uh, semiotic mo models which take into account these uh, various dimensions. And third, the semiotic models can be used to study the interplay between matter and meaning that uh, is the dynamic of their relationship over time. So this includes how changes in semiotic power impact on the world and vice versa. So um, these aspects of uh, matter and meanings are considered below and uh, with the aim of exploring the significance of semiotic system in relationship to human existence. So um, human perspective, the physical world, um, using combinations of uh, different senses such as signs, hearing, touch, smell, and so on, then they construct the, the representations of this world using semiotic resources. However, a sensory input from the environment is considered by social factors and influences, which include the context, culture, beliefs, values, and life experience. So uh, from this perspective, semiotic involves four systems. Physical system, which, which is a, like a material world. Um, biological system, human beliefs, social system, society and culture, and semiotic system. Meanings made through language, images, and etc. So each of the four systems consists of matter that um, is they have a material basis, but at the same time, these systems can be ordered in terms of complexity. So in the first case, physical systems are the simplest because they consist of matter alone. Biological systems are more complex because they are both physical and biological. They consist of matter with the additional dimension of life. Social systems are even more complex because they are both physical and biological, but they also involve social structure and organization. And lastly, semiotic systems are the most complex because they are simultaneously physical, biological, and social. And furthermore, they involve meaning. So for this reason, Hale Day describes semiotic systems as having a fourth order of complexity, which you can see on this uh, slide on top. So uh, he conceptualizes uh, the four orders of complexity that they are useful because they provide the basic of developing semiotic models. They take into account the material, biological, social, and semiotic dimensions of human experience. So from this perspective, semiotic analysis includes material systems such as like, for instance, color, brightness, texture, loudness, speech, and so on, uh, sense modalities. Yes, oh, you can see it here. Um, which could be like uh, sounds, taste, smell, the social context in terms of uh, situational in, and cultural par parameters, and the means through which uh, semiotic resources are organized and used as tool for constructing and acting upon the world. So in relation to language, Halide calls these last dimensions, the organization features through which meaning is made the grammar. Oh, sorry, it is not here. Um, through which um, sanctions and experience through social, social relations and transformed into meaning. So from this perspective, grammar is the theory of human experience. So this view of grammar leads to a grammatically informed meta language that is a grammatics for understanding and working with language. Such an approach has been applied to other semiotic resources, resulting 
in a multimodal grammatics for semiotics phenomena. And the approach uh, involves conceptualizing the underlying organization of uh, semantic systems and the meaning arising from their interactions in semiotic phenomena. So this semiotic framework, which you can see on the slide, takes into account the physical, biological, social, and the semiotic dimensions of human experience. Changes in any of these dimensions um, revertible across the meta system as a whole, affecting the other dimensions as indicated by the dotted lines and the rows um, in this table. So for example, changes in color and brightness, such as like in lightning, for instance, impact on the sensory inputs, the social context and the meaning that are made. Likewise, the material attributes of the situation, um, for instance, face-to-face -face meeting or versus online Zoom meetings, change the social context and the nature of semiotics choices that they are made. And the fourth order of complexity and the resulting semiotic framework provide a conceptual basic for investigating the relations between matter, the material world, and the meaning, semiotic resources. In what follows, these relations are explored from a historical perspective. And as will be seen, Semiotic construction arising from textual, linguistic, symbolic, computers, and programming language, and the uh, visual system of uh, meaning. Human history can be viewed and, um, as a construct interplay and tension between material and semiotic world. So semiotic resources are developed and used to construct knowledge, giving rise to various forms of technology of acting on the environment. So Hilbert identifies these uh, main technological ages, such as um, transforming material, uh, transforming energy, and transforming information. So the first and second technological ages were concerned with the material world, while the third is concerned with the semiotic world of information. And the last two technological ages um, have been conceptualized as four industrial revolutions. So the first industrial revolution involved a transition from hand production to machine production through water and steam power. The second industrial revolution involved electrification of manufacturing, processing, and development of the modern production line, and the expansion of railway and te telegraphic networks. So these two industrial revolutions led to main to major changes in the organization of society as people migrated to city to work in factories. So these changes included urbanizations, new class structures, and the industrial capitalist division of labor. The third industrial revolution involved the development of computation and supercomputers for storing and exchanging information. More recently, the fourth industrial revolution has involved automation and data exchange and the development of cyber physical systems, the internet of things, cloud computing, cognitive computing and artificial intelligence. So the third and the fourth industrial revolution variously known as the information age, digital age and the computer age involved a shift to digital technologies and as we shall see, the information age has changed human experience in way which continue to emerge. In a focusing of industrialized societies and their semiotic innovations that are oriented to industrial purposes, um, Logan was identifying um, six evolutions of human semiotics such as uh, speech, writing, mathematics, science, computing, and the internet. And these developments 
correspond to the variance of technological ages and industrial revolutions. And here we will focus more on um, meaning uh, reconsiderations. So following uh, Hilde's social sem semiotic approach, semiotics resources are seen to simultaneously realize the four standards of meaning. Uh, that is, semiotic resources are used to construct human experience, logically connect happenings, enact social relations, and organize and compose the message. So these four standards of meaning are called experimental, logical, interpersonal, and textual metafunctions. Semiotic analysis is concerned with the underlying organization of architecture of semiotic resources, through which the four standards of meaning are made, and the meaning which arise through the interaction of semiotic choices in semiotic phenomena. That is, social semiotics is concerned with the organization or grammar of semiotic resources and meanings uh, which arise intersimultaneously as semiotic choices combined in semiotics artifacts and processes. And this approach to semiotic resources is concept conceptualized as system and text. System consists of sets of discrete options, such as speech acts, process types. Um, and um, or, or dimensions with the options which vary consciously and texts, which could be like semiotic texts and processes, which consist of choices from these systems. So, for example, the experimental meaning in the language is, um, uh, sorry, so, so for example, interpersonal meaning in a language is realized through exchange of information like statements and questions and goods and services, offers and commands, while interpersonal meaning in the images is realized by positioning the viewer as being involved in the sense, like through direct gaze of figures in the image, or as an observer of the sense through indirect and or uh, internal gaze of figures in the image. So these systems provide the basic for conceptualizing language and images as semiotic resources. And uh, for analyzing the meaning arising from linguistic and visual choices is multimodal text. In the age of informational information technologies, uh, there are parallels uh, between printing press and computers as agents of change, giving that both technologies uh, enable information to be shared. However, the printing press computers are fundamentally different technologies in terms of their um, uh, functionalities and how they operate. The difference and the resulting impact are considered from a social semiotic perspective. So the printing press pr produces material objects such as books, papers, journals, and etc. with semiotic uh, representations which are visible to the reader. The printing press led to standardization of uh, mathematical and scientific writings and other forms um, of writings and of knowledge which became available to society as a whole. So the printing press contributed to two industrial revolution and uh, the restructuring of society. Computers and digital media platforms have also given rise to two industrial revolutions, which have changed the social order, but in different ways, given how digital technologies operate. Uh, that is um, like computers, personal computers could be, or um, laptops, tablets, smartphones, and so on. Um, are input or output machines that access, store, and process data from external sources, such as could be 
keyboards, touch screens, mouse, sensors, and etc. So they return and required output that process to users. So these tasks are performed by software applications, which are designed to undertake specific tasks for such as word processing applications, social media applications, media players, uh, web browsers. So in addition, system software programs are concerned with operations of the computer itself. Computer processing involves strings of zeros and ones, which are translated into usable output that can be read, viewed, heard, felt, sometimes by humans on the digital interference. So software programs are written using computers programming languages, which are largely textual in nature, considering of words, numbers, punctuations, organized into semantic configurations. Programming languages have an underlying grammar, which is well-defined like mathematical and uh, scientific symbolic forms of representations. So in this case, programming languages are used to describe the described result. And um, here we could see um, a neutral uh, language model and pixels. And uh, later I will explain what it is. So um, the way in which computers and the digital media technologies function have major implications of uh, how information is created, accessed and disturbed in society today. So for example, um, unlike the printing press, where the semiotic representations uh, were visible to readers, software programs with their sequence of logical operations ran in the background, while the programming languages are used to create new semiotic resources, many of which are visual in nature, like um, computer graphics, um, virtual reality. These semiotic representations are enabled and thus controlled by those who developed and owned the software applications and hard drive in which these programs operate. So for instance, users have to create semiotics constructs according to the ways in which software applications have been programmed. So these options, um, like uh, for instance, PowerPoint and social media have reshaped the nature of social activities. Um, and as a result has transformed the social practices. Most significantly, um, and users to create access and share information across digital, digital media platforms using the facilities which are provided already. So digital, uh, so the, digi the current digital ecosystem has um, major social ramifications, while these benefits of uh, digital media which include a uh, widespread dimensional of information, facilitation of resistance against oppressive political regimes, maintenance of social conception and provisions of uh, medical assistance in the remote areas are evident, this comes with a price. So firstly, the power to decide what information is accessed, circulated and filtrated out lies in the hands of major institutions and organizations. So these are most often like the big tech companies like um, Amazon, Apple, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, whose digital ecosystems provide users with sets of interconnected services in one integrated experience. These tech companies control the contact and services which are available and they monitor their use. And secondly, users provide personal information and express opinions, ideas, and views um, about the context of services they encounter. The large tech companies connect various forms of user-generated data and offer utilize AI and data-driven technologies 
for analyzing, predicting, and modifying behavior. The data and data analytics about user behavior are sold, giving rise to what um, Zubov calls surveillance capitalism. And specifically, this involves taking various dimensions of human life, like uh, physical actions, biological information, social interactions, and semiotic constructions and converting it in, into behavioral data, which can be analyzed and sold for profit. The same companies have also used search advertising and messages tools to complete with eliminate and replace traditional offering of competitors. <coughs> no. So, <coughs> sorry. So the current digital ecosystem which is largely controlled by major corporations, had led to unprotected conception of power, knowledge, and wealth, and raised challenges to those engagement and equality. At the same time, societies are increasingly characterized by inequality and disrespect levels of uh, digital and data literacy. So um, data AI algorithms, which attempt to model human cognition in order to analyze uh, the vast collections of data have become core research areas. So for example, the screenshot that you can see behind um, is a dynamic stipulations of multi layered neutral, neutral network for classifying digits zero to nine based on pixels. And uh, as you can see in this example, AI algorithms are based on the material signals and models which imitate the firing uh, of human biological neurons. So this AI algorithm provides data, but not meaning. Nevertheless, the impact of using AI to analyze the data collected by digital media technologies is profound. Um, so like, for example, AI algorithms from the backbone of uh, search engines, online shopping, advertising, vir virtual assistance, image analysis, speech and uh, face recognition system, cybersecurity, all of which influence human behavior with recommendations about trending news, whom to follow, what to read, watch, eat and buy, and how to spend time. Um, even dating services may recommendations about potential partners and uh, wearable devices, um, like a fitness program, a programmers based on human biological signals. And uh, the present time, digital devices are used to collect uh, physical, biological, social, and semiotic data. But this information is not synthesized into a metasemiotic model, which takes into account the underlying of physical, biological, social, and semantic system. Rather, AI algorithms depend on the brute force to discover underlying patterns in the ways which functions to reinforce prevailing biases and naturalized views of reality. Uh, so for example, AI techniques have led to biased results due to the factors such as the nature of the algorithms and the way in which data is collected, coded, stored, analyzed, and interpreted. AI bias has been observed in search in giants and social media platforms, which had resulted in trending and privileging uh, social, uh, certain social groups platforms, which has resulted in targeting and privileging certain social groups over others, violating of privacy and discrimination based on race, gender, sexuality, and ethnicity. And moreover, AI algorithms are black boxes models where it is not clear how the results have been derived. So um, as it was mentioned before, AI uh, data which are collected for algorithms uh, can cause um, also gender biases. So um, 
Besides the problems of uh, unequal availability of uh, machine readable data sets, there are problems with biases uh, within their respective data sets. In uh, contrast to language corporum, uh, there have been developed in the linguistic research. There is often no intention in the language industry to create what lingui linguistics call the um, balance uh, data, or like balance corporum. Um, so for example, by selecting text uh, on the basics of criteria like um, uh, literacy, register, gender, gender, age, educational status, and etc. As have been elaborated um, before, um, data sets typically used by the industry, and they are based on the data that are available on the web. And yet the assumption that uh, these data represent neutral language is faulty. So, um, by showing those examples, we could see, for instance, um, that um, in the Wikipedia, which has been problematized in several contexts, like text from English language Wikipedia pages, have been used to train algorithms that create models of word embeddings. However, the language used in Wikipedia is not neutral and does not represent the language use of all speakers of English. Rather, it is mostly male academic ages from um, around 1830s who have no partners, no family, who produce largest share of text on Wikipedia. So this fact uh, that uh, contents content and topics on Wikipedia are therefore biased, have been discussed, uh, for example, that like the only 18% of uh, biographies on Wikipedia are of women. And it is now well known that um, um, like internet-based data set and encode the dominant view which uh, further harms people um, at the margins. And um, in relation to language, uh, this means that the written language practices of young male academically trained populations define what is understood and reproduced as normal language in digital language technologies that have been trained with such data sets. So culture and class-specific monolingual standard norms of writing are therefore refined by such technologies. Some tools um, have been based um, in, even more on the problematic data such as GPT-3, for example, that have been practically trained with the data from Reddit as a social media platform that is well known for a male dominance and um, as well as uh, sexist and racist context. It could uh, be shown that uh, 63,000 texts used for training GPT-3 were from subreaders that had been banned due their problematic context. So language productions that entail structural racism and sexism are common in such data. And when the foundation is biased, there is a good chance that it is spread to the entire system. Gender biases in data, for example, lead to the automatic generations of text that reproduces highly stereotypical images of men and women. Thus, it has been demonstrated for some word embedding tools that male subjects are associated not only with generally more words, but also with more highly valued uh, value words. And um, in an online tool that illustrates that the problem of the five the most commonly associative adjectives with the pronoun he um, and, um, and she. And uh, also another very good example could be showing like, um, like the famous, like the most this famous example is that the ma the man is a computer programmer, is and um, while homemaker is more likely associated associated with a 
woman. Uh, so, um, what could be implications for semiotics? So, uh, this um, the first two industrial revolutions as the transforming materials resulted in a uh, resulted in a division of labor, but uh, the two most recent industrial revolutions, such as the transforming information, have led to a division of learning. And this division has led to reorganization of knowledge, authority, and power, which extends beyond the workforce, given that each aspect of daily life, including actions, options, opinions, feelings, emotions, and personal relationships, is now mediated by digital media platforms, which store and codify the data obtained. And in addition, every aspect of culture and civilization is being digitalized, stored, and analyzed as well. Um, essentially, the current digital system function, um, functions as a one-way mirror. Uh, within this context, members of society use digital media, like the first text, for um, every facet of their lives while being watched, analyzed, and manipulated via the shadow text by those who have designed and own the digital platforms. In this world, users, users are in a clear view and private companies operate, operate behind closed doors. Moreover, this uh, like the same companies have uh, been structured the services of those trained in AI for the purpose of predicting, influencing, and modifying human behavior for profit. Uh, technology has traditionally been developed to control the material world, but now digital technologies in concert with the gathering and analyzing information for controlling human behavior. At this stage, data science and AI are being used to determine what information is made available and to whom. However, computer science techniques are um, insufficient for uh, interpreting um, meanings, uh, largely because computer science methods are based on scientific forms of representations which do not take into account the multiple realms of human experience. Um, Zubov says that uh, we have moved to unparalleled imbalance in power, an authoritarian privatization of the division of a land in the society today. The question which arises as the role of um, semiotics today, given that humans will continue to communicate in whatever ways possible using tangible benefits. Um, O'Halloran claims that semiotics research needs to address the new challenges arising from the current digital ecosystem. And um, the research uh, believes that one way forward is to develop semiotic frameworks which incorporate the four orders of complexity involving the physical, biological, social, and semiotic systems that connect matter to meaning. And such meta-semiotic mo models can be integrated with computer science techniques to develop explainable AI algorithms, which can be interrogated according to parameters across the four types of system. And such models will be able to show the effect of changes in any of other systems, such as uh, physical attributes, sensory inputs, the social context and semiotic choices on the result which are obtained. And the new explainable AI algorithms can be used to understand and challenge the result of current methods, which functions uh, to reinforce the status quo and existing biases as inequalities. Such an approach would enable a step change in research methodologies, 
and tools for understanding the relations between digital media and society and their social, culture, political and economic impact. In turn, this would assist uh, with the development of digital and data literacies. So um, from that point, it would be possible to um so so from that point it would be possible to inform uh, design uh, policy making and activism around future digital technologies based on uh, principles of inclusion equality transparency privacy social solidarity health and well-being uh, sustainably and um, preservation of the natural world this agenda would include removing one-way mirror so that the shadow text is in a clear view, assisting with the development of explainable AI algorithms to understand the distribution and filtering of information together with the inherent biases and possibilities for social change, providing opportunities for increased digital and data literacies. In other words, uh, semiotic science for undertaking research and stimulating social actions of uh, mitigate of miti oh, of uh, mitigate in the risk of leverage beliefs of uh, digital media technologies is required. And uh, as Zubov's beliefs and claims that surveillance capitalism depends on the social and it is only in and so collective social actions that the largest promise of an information capitalism aligned with the flourishing third modernity can be reclaimed. And for, from this perspective, it is evident that the semiotic has a major role to play for the uh, foreseeable uh, future. So, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Julia. Important topics. I have plenty of comments myself, but I would leave the floor open for anyone, anyone with comments in the room or anyone with comments online. If you're online, just uh, raise a hand. It looks like Anna has a question. Go ahead, Anna. Okay, so uh, great presentation. By the way, I have actually two questions for you. So my first question is, uh, would you in your research actually include uh, semiotics of culture, let's say transmediality and new development semiosphere? Would you ever do that? Do you ever consider about that? Not only socio-semiotics. Um, well, I haven't considered it before, but um, maybe like in future research, I will consider it. Probably. Okay, thank you. And my second question is, when you mentioned normal language, what did you mean by that? Was that like, let's say, natural language, which was defined as the primary system by Yuri Lotman? What was the normal language for you that, when you mentioned it? Can you like, yes, explain that? Yes, in this that? presentation, normal language was considered as a natural language that we use. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that question, Anna. It looks like Pablo has got a question. Go ahead, Pablo. Hi, hi from Tallinn. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, it really, I really like it, especially part of when we were talking about this uh, chat GPT, uh, how it was trained using like subreddits. That's actually quite crazy and definitely full of biases. And uh, yeah, it let me thinking a lot, but I wanted to know if like more in detail or more like an overview, like maybe your personal views actually on the on this uh, article we were talking at the beginning about O'Halloran. Um, Pablo, could you please repeat your question because my internet is not so good now and I didn't hear the full question. Ah, uh, sorry. No, if you could actually uh, maybe tell a bit about your personal take on the views of O'Halloran. From uh, as okay. linguistic. Uh, okay, so um, for me, I see like um, the big importance of um, recognizing the ways in which language and symbols uh, shape our, uh, our understanding of the world like around us. 
And um, I um, kind of agree with the outer approach as a way of uh, highlighting the material objects themselves that they can be understood as um, signifiers, like carrying the meaning beyond their physical properties. And uh, honestly, I support the author efforts to explore the complex relationships between um, matter and meaning and uh, how new semiotics approach as a tool for analyzing a new digital area that could be very useful, I believe. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Pablo. Well, uh, the strong, you could have equally just as easily titled your presentation the techno capital or the problems of techno capital in AI, right? Because gen the gender issue was almost as an afterthought. Yes, but I understand that the, the gender issue is in fact the direct interest. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, I was thinking, have you ever heard of this book called The Alphabet Versus the Goddess? It's from the uh, 90s. It's really, well, not really academic book, but it was a bestseller in the United States. And it's just about this hypothesis about alphabetism itself somehow in, installing a kind of patriarchy or like male bias, pro male bias throughout culture. And that this bias is preserved also in digital technologies. His research is dubious, but the hypothesis itself is deeply fascinating about the linearity of alphabetism and poses all sorts of profound questions which have been taken up in different contexts by Derrida, uh, for example, and mm -hmm. others. So I don't know, it might be interesting uh, to pursue that. Thank you. Thank you for the recommendation. Nice. Anyone in the room? Thoughts, comments, questions? Nothing from Connor? <laughs> That's okay. I'm blown away. That was amazing. Connor's blown away. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, but if not, then uh, let's carry on. Uh, but thank you once again, Leah.